exactly. Even the world leaders. Especially the world leaders. The people would panic, assuming anyone believed them, which they wouldn't. You can find speculation on the net if you look hard enough. Some of them get pretty close to the truth, but the stories never made it into the mainstream. Just another conspiracy theory. I'm not surprised. It's a little hard to believe, you know? It just sounds crazy. When Kevin briefed me about all this in orientation, I thought it was some kind of BS detecting test. And you know what hit me when I was looking at her? She kind of reminds me of uh, the woman in the uh, beautiful Joe. Give me number damn. Was like her name like Sylvia or something like that? Can't remember that well. I haven't played beautiful Joe that much really, but she kind of reminds me of her. But then again, Platinum Studios is pretty much Cloverfield since Capcom fired the hell out of them. I don't know why, but they did that. Got any more information? Roger that. Keep up the good work. Hey, Raiden. Let me ask you something. The Patriots. Why would AIs do all of that? I can see why people would want all the money, but AIs? What did they stand to gain from it all? Who knows? Maybe they didn't even know. Optical neuro AIs aren't your typical PCs. They learn over time, change in unpredictable ways. The core AI, JD, was bent on expanding the war economy. Maybe to fund the Patriots' other activities. Or maybe that's just the way it evolved. Like a secondary objective that took over. One of the other AIs said it was created to filter <laughs> out unnecessary information, gossip, trivia, all for the sake of future generations, to drive the evolution of the human race. Or what the hell happened to Rose? Was that the truth? Why? <laughs> <laughs> to manipulate me. <laughs> Guess she just disappeared. To think. Something like that. Running a nation. An America, no less. It's terrifying. Thank God they were all destroyed. But did it really change that much? Uh, maybe not. Contractors still got to eat after all. Soldiering for hire's always been a risky business, but at least before it was good money. There was a decent chance you could get rich and retire early. All that disappeared during the SOP years. Demand was high, but the workforce was flooded. More and more soldiers were willing to work for cheap. It got so you'd have to work years before you could even pay back your initial training and insurance fees. Yeah, I can see Sundowner's point. Uh, the global recession certainly didn't help. Unemployment shot up across the U.S. and the E.U. Even if contractors gave up and packed it in, there weren't any jobs waiting for them back home. The irony is the recovery was all war-driven. It wasn't a general recovery at all. Not only did globalization exploit the poor countries, but it crippled first world employment, too. And SOP's gone. But now we've got these PMCs that are basically mobsters. Just thugs in uniform. Yeah, not a pretty picture. Any more information? What's up? Okay, save complete. Don't let your guard down, okay? Ah, oh, no more information. The stealth craft made it back to Sochi, all right? Da, safe and sound. No repairs necessary. Some routine maintenance and she'll be as good as new. Good to hear. I'm guessing that thing doesn't come cheap. Well, an old Soviet army friend gave me discount. He runs a PMC specializing in airborne warfare. An air force for hire? <laughs> That's a new one. Ever since SOP, Mercs started to fill more and more regular combat duties. SOP ended, but the trend did not. Most every modern military relies on PMC support in one way or another. Good news for Maverick, I suppose. Anyway, that's quite the little jet your friend has. I was expecting a lot of turbulence coming in that low, but she was smooth as silk. Didn't feel like I was a bird exactly, but probably the next best thing. The MQ-133C uses a brand new type of active adjustment control system. Sensors on the plane take readings 120 times a second, and to be honest, I don't know how it works. But the crew chief tells me this is what keeps her flying so steady. 
It is all state-of-the-art technology. There are only three of them in the entire world. Even the RQ-133 spy plane she is based on is only two years old. It is fitted specially for cyborg. So maybe demand is a bit low now, but I think that will change soon, eh? Hmm. It's funny. Its guts are all bleeding edge. But from the outside, it looks almost retro. Until recently, stealth aircraft design was focused on radar absorbing materials and improving aerodynamics. But lately, engineers are trying to use the shape of the craft to do more than improve gas mileage. Maneuverability is a low priority. This kind of plane is not meant for dogfighting, after all. And we can afford all this? I hate to ask, but will we clear a profit on this op? You need not worry about such things. But yes, we should be fine. Where the proper equipment can make or break a mission, we should have the best. That miss with the anti-air missile last month was a painful reminder of this lesson. Ah, uh, yeah. I see what you mean. Damn. Huh. I didn't think flares could still fool anti-air missiles like that. They, uh, can't. At least not with any modern missile. Recent missiles rely on a dual wavelength, or IIR system, for guidance. Flares wouldn't fool either of them. But that was no recent missile I had. That Cusack Derma couldn't even take down a fat tilt rotor target. At a close range! Chort was me. Come on, Boris. We had no intel. No reason to think that we'd be facing anything like that. You budgeted for the tools appropriate to the job. No one blames you. Perhaps. In any case, now we know what we are dealing with. This is still a business, but this time I am stretching the budget as much as possible. Expenses like that aircraft and your new body are all part of this. Both were worth the money. This body's more capable than I could have imagined. I'm glad you feel this way, since it is still company property. Remember, if you quit on us, you either return it or you buy it. Yeah, Boris. I remember the first five times you told me. <laughs> Ryder, we are clear on the rules of engagement, yes? Clear enough. I can use deadly force against any hostile elements. Hostile cyborgs, I can strike first. Basically, yes. The actual rules of engagement is more specific. A long list of no's. But you have the idea. You want to recap the highlights for me? <sighs> no weapons prohibited by international treaty. No use of force against non-combatants, especially officials or anyone with political power who may be needed for negotiations. No use of force against any unarmed hostile seeking to surrender. And no use of force <coughs> against any non-cyborg combatants without prior verbal warning. And that includes Dolzayev? Duh, but this should not be a problem. Any non-cyborg is little threat to you, Dolzayev included. Besides, we have no signs of any non-cyborg hostels anywhere in the area. Not even one. We think Dolsaev is working alone with Desperado here. In any case, that is the ROE. Otherwise, deadly force is authorized only in clear case of self-defense. So basically, civilians off-limits, human hostels verbal warning, hostile cyborgs, anything goes. Yes, this is a conventional warfare scenario, so the rules are based on the Hague Convention. Yeah, sounds pretty standard. Still good to list out all the no-nos before things get too hairy. ROEs that only specify who you can engage require too much judgment. They make it harder to remain focused on battle. Duh. This is why most military's ROEs list negatives, not positives. The few that take the other approach? I pity their soldiers the questions they face. No, oh, and for our purposes, UGs are considered the same as hostile cyborgs. Copy that. We have no rules about property damage, but uh, keep it minimal, yes? It just makes us look bad. <laughs> Anything standing in your way, trees, street lights, this is fine. But there's no reason to damage civilian homes, or to go snooping around in them. Goes without saying. <laughs> hey Boris, about the Soliton radar. I noticed that it doesn't get jammed anymore, even if I get spotted by the enemy. Back in the old days, it'd be useless the second an alarm was triggered. Well, once the Patriots fell, classified technology spread all over the world. This new Soliton radar is one example. By applying a non-linear Schrodinger equation to the Soliton solution, 
they were able to prevent the jamming that plagued the original models based off the KDV equation. I'm impressed. You know your stuff, Mr. President. Of course. I'm a businessman. You think I could run a profitable PMSC without being up to date on the latest tech? But I wonder, how exactly is the equation different? I mean, I'm no expert on how the KDV equation was implemented in the first place, but I'd love to know how the Schrodinger equation fits into all this. <sighs> Raiden, on Battlefield, most important thing is how to use equipment, not theory behind it. The mission is number one priority. So do not worry your head about equations and such things. Just concentrate on using the equipment to your advantage, da? In other words, you have absolutely no idea, do you? Da! The mission, Raiden! Focus on the mission! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Raiden found him out. Raiden, what I said about staying focused on the mission. Understood. No need to explain. I say this because I have been there. I have let my emotions take over on the battlefield. Some of the PMC work I did after my discharge was... They were gray area jobs. But that's all in the past. When I took on those former PLA soldiers to form Maverick, I laid out my conditions. We would only take operations we believed in. And we would run them clean. No exceptions. Most of them agreed. They had their own bad memories from their time in Paradise Lost. I can certainly attest to that. Yes, of course. I forget who I'm talking with. Most of the XPLA have moved on now, in any case. But the point remains the same. Everyone at Maverick is accountable for their actions. We are clear to take this job under international law. And we can use force against any cyborg hostiles under the basic rules of engagement. But remember, if we harm any civilians, on purpose or no, will mean trouble. All kinds of trouble. So, stay in control and stay on mission. Got it. Could have been called Maverick Hunters. Oh wait, that's Capcom. <laughs> Raiden, if you ever get lost, use Augment Mode to check your next objective. By using Augment Mode, you can see enemy positions and the direction in which you should head. Useful for when you cannot find your objective on the Solitone radar. Hmm. Guess that's it. I'm not gonna talk to that guy, that guy's just gonna be boring. <laughs> anyway then. I want your BP! I want it all! So I can buy something! I will chop it up. <laughs> Ooh, more chops. Uh BP, give me it all, give me it all, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Okay, that should be enough. <laughs> hey, out of the way. Ah, uh, not nah, that's definitely not enough. Too. Here's a demo boss fight. After this, the whole game can be blind. <laughs> cyborg. Show yourself. Well, that's the way to show yourself.
and you are.